This is the nation's capital at night, sprawling, congested, laid out in spokes of broad avenues, squares, and circles. A city that is different in many ways from other major U.S. cities, but very much the same in that it is a big city, burdened with big city problems, not the least of which is crime on the streets. Below, crime lurks in the darkness of quiet residential streets, in neighborhood shopping districts, in parking lots and doorways. Here, along the streets, crime is being deterred, deterred by light. Light, as we see, as bright as afternoon sunshine. This is a report on what this city is doing about it and how the officials of the District of Columbia, working in close harmony with business and community leaders, private citizens and other groups, are turning back the darkness of city streets to curb street crime. It is a report on what takes place when dark residential streets are turned into sunny side lanes at night, when main arteries and business districts are turned warm, attractive for pedestrians and motorists alike, when Washington scenic areas its public buildings and its monuments to the nation's past are turned into places of welcome and safety at night. And when in the process, through a program of relighting the city with high-intensity lights, crime is being reduced to the degree of prompting one inner-city newspaper to refer to Washington's program as One Glow of Hope. I'm Nicholas Horrock, a member of Newsweek magazine's Washington Editorial Bureau. One glow of hope, to a newsman perhaps a romantic phrase, but to a city, its people and its mayor, the relighting of Washington stands as just that, a glow which started with a commitment by Mayor Walter E. Washington, made early in his anti-crime campaign. As you know, my campaign has been to return the streets not only to the citizens of this city, but the citizens of the United States. And this is what our endeavor is, to really return the streets of a city in America, the nation's capital, to the people. And that's what we're about. We're lighting the streets. From the mayor's concern to stem the rise in crime that plagued all cities grew a massive program to dramatically improve street lighting. The city's Department of Highways and Traffic led by Mr. John E. Hartley, responded quickly to the mayor's program. And we undertook a crash installation program, which included about 2,000 high-intensity street lights. Uh, this uh, included not only neighborhood streets, residential areas, but streets on which small businesses were located as well. The results were astounding even to us. In the five-month period, after the installation of these lights, total nighttime crime had reduced 30%. And that was during a comparative period of the year before when crime had actually been on the increase. And this 30% reduction in these four high crime areas is significantly uh, more of a reduction than has been occurring on a citywide basis. Thus, high intensity street lighting is reducing crime today in the nation's capital. It didn't just happen. All segments of the community, private citizens, businesses, associations, and government played important roles in building the lighting program from rather modest beginnings. Initially, we installed a system of about 100 sodium vapor lights in the vicinity of the Robert F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium. Police had been uh, contacting us frequently in terms of uh, roving bands of young vandals who were uh, harassing motorists going back to their cars after games. So we thought that perhaps the installation of high-pressure lights in an area of nighttime activity, uh, especially one of the great nighttime activity, would be a good place to at least gauge the effects not only of the lighting in terms of what it would do to the vandals, but what it would do in terms of reaction. Uh, secondly, we decided that it would be proper to install uh, a group of sodium vapor lights adjacent to a governmental building. Uh, primarily because of our Fine Arts Commission, we wanted to be sure that sodium vapor lighting would be agreeable to those who have the responsibility for ensuring the aesthetics of the nation's capital. Well, fortunately, the officials of the Fine Arts Commission, and especially its chairman, endorsed sodium vapor lighting completely, and the uh, fact uh, indicated that it was rather a warm glow of course, there were other events. 
a senseless killing of a co-ed at Catholic University uh, in which a young uh, co-ed had been murdered uh, led to a, an urgent request by officials of Catholic University to Mayor Walter E. Washington that we do something immediately to improve nighttime security adjacent to the campus. And within 24 hours, we had installed 22 sodium vapor lights adjacent to the campus. Security officials at the campus itself indicated that the most effective one element of the anti-crime measures taken at the university was the installation of sodium vapor lighting. From these initial experiences, better lighting emerged as an important element in the attempt to reduce crime in the District of Columbia. The District of Columbia is divided up into a system by the police known as Kearney Blocks. They're nothing more than uh, geographical areas in which crime in one section of the city can be compared to crime statistics in other sections of the city. Now, four of the highest crime areas that existed at that time was this one, east of the Anacostia River, one, believe it or not, immediately east of, ca of the Capitol itself in the Capitol Hill area, one in the northwest section of the city, and another over near one of our, our circles. The program to use high-intensity street lighting was underway. The very fabric of life in the inner city began to change as the lights return the streets to the people. We've had continuous demands from citizens who have gone into neighborhoods where the lighting is, and they have come back and uh, said, look, we want this for our neighborhood. We want uh, this, uh, not yesterday, but today, uh, and we think that this will make a difference. It will give us an opportunity to see the dead spots to see people moving, it brings people out in neighborhoods, it feels safer. But I can't see how the lighting can do anything but good. And business in the Washington area is good. Uh, uh, okay, you have problems of traffic, parking, no metro and so forth, but this city is teeming, and it's teeming downtown. Believe me, I'm for doing everything that looks positive. You can't help but have confidence seeing people out, around, so I, I think each light is worth uh, five policemen, and I think very well of the Metropolitan Police Force. I think uh, the people in the Highway Division, people like Tom Ayers, Jack Hartley, I, I, I think these are real public servants that not only are dedicated, but get a job done. I've never seen anything in government or anywhere else move as quickly as this did. Our employees uh, were complaining. A lot of them wanted to be transferred to some of the outlying stores, and others uh, disliked exceedingly to have to come downtown to work. Until finally, about in April 1970, uh, when the city installed the good-looking vapor lights that we have, and they brightly lighted up the entire area, we noticed that at that point, things seemed to stabilize. Uh, traffic did reduce. It uh, didn't get any worse. And then from that point on, it seemed to pick up. Why, things picked up quite a bit. And we saw many more people downtown, and our store had many more customers. The increasing movement of people on the streets had breathed new life into the evening business community. Ever since the lighting was installed here at Thomas Circle, there's absolutely no question as the improvement uh, relating to business. Both our transient market in terms of using our restaurants and lounge, and the overnight stayer, they're absolutely, uh, it's uncontested. It's a fact. I'm, sh I'm sure that other hotels in Washington are rather envious that they don't have quite the lighting that we do here because it does help. It generates people and people generate business. We're running uh, in excess of uh, 15, 18% higher than a year ago prior to the lighting. Obviously, other businesses as well as individual citizens became interested in better lighting. They wanted it and they found various ways to achieve it. The letter was written to the highway department in the district asking if a private company such as the Washington Hilton could buy these sodium vapor street lights from the city and have them installed. Uh, the city replied through Mr. Bassaran, who's head of the street lighting department, that <clears throat> the city preferred not to light just three lights which cover the section of the hotel on the street, but that they would prefer to light the entire block, which is about two city blocks long. Of course, the hotel 
wasn't budgeted for uh, two city blocks of streetlights. So through uh, Mr. Schilder, who edits the uh, community newspaper in this neighborhood, the Intoner, uh, we were able to set up a meeting of property owners residing along this section of the street. And uh, at that meeting, we were able to uh, have money contributed by the people along 19th Street with the hotel contributing a part of this fund. And approximately uh, the first week of March, these new lights went on, and it's made quite a difference. Well, when the hotel indicated the amount that they would pay, and they, another property owner said he would match it, uh, this stimulated other owners to come forward with uh, offers of money so that raising the $1,500 was a relatively simple matter. I might say that this element of cooperation is absolutely indispensable to any kind of a community effort, whether it be in the creation of sodium vapor lights or whether it be in uh, picking up the garbage on the street. I think it has relieved our feelings about being afraid. I, I'm not as afraid as I was because I was afraid to stick my head out the door. Now when I open the door, I can see across the street, I can see Florida Avenue and I can see up 19th Street. And since the light's been in the alley, I think that's the best of all because I can look out my back and see that apartment house and see part of that alley back there. And that has been a worry. Many avenues to better lighting mushroom. But although four consecutive presidents have called for Washington to be a model city for the nation, tough-minded political experts on Capitol Hill are quick to point out that without funds, it is hard for other cities to follow the lead of the nation's capital. With the growing success of Washington's new lighting, however, support for funding began to grow proportionately. Well, it seems to me like that the atmosphere that a city should create, not only for its business community, but likewise for its, for its citizenry, is uh, one of, of, of safety, one of, of contentment, at least uh, safety type of contentment, when they, when they go through their, uh, their normal day's activities and normal night activities. And uh, we, at least the, one of the missions of municipal government or government itself is to provide a safe area of, for its, uh, for its people to live and to, and to work. And it would seem that, that this, is a, this, above all, is one of the most Im important aspects that, that government has. One of the recommendations in this small business crime report of 1969 said that effective street lighting is one of the best deterrents to robbery and burglary. From a committee point of view was that this street lighting effort would provide tremendous benefit not only to businessmen as such, but to residents in providing the type of a life and the type of a, of a community that uh, should have. One of the things that the Senate Small Business Committee is doing at the moment is uh, in the process of working with the Small Business Administration and the Law Enforcement Assistance Administration in upgrading the Crime Against Small Business Report. With this upgraded report, there will be a catalog of federal assistance programs. Uh, Senator Bible's committee will make recommendations to both businessmen, to communities, and uh, the federal government at large as to what they can do to uh, protect, better protect the small businessman and provide uh, uh, better services to him in the area of security. We had testimony from the city of Oakland, California that indicated the, the tremendous benefit of this type of thing. In 1968, Congress authorized a new approach to urban renewal called the Neighborhood Development Program. One of the important advantages of the Neighborhood Development Program is that the local agencies have much more flexibility in the use of their funds. It's much easier for us to reprogram our funds under NDP than it was under the conventional approach to urban renewal because uh, one of the effects of the street lighting program has been a, a significant reduction in crime in the areas where the lights have been placed. And the local law enforcement assistance agency and the Department of Justice can provide funds to help a community carry out a program of this kind. 
the major source of funding was the urban renewal program. And as I mentioned, with neighborhood development program monies being reprogrammed, we were able to contract with the highway department to provide these funds. Uh, the highway department uh, does street lighting around the city with its own monies, but uh, our highway department, like many others throughout the country, is strapped for monies. And uh, so these two additional sources of federal funding were very helpful to us in getting the program uh, launched and in operation. But the initiative, of course, began within the city government itself. From the highway department's initial installation cost of less than $100,000 sprang strong local government support. The council added $600,000 to the highway department's budget for street lighting because it felt that the highway department was really too conservative in the amount of money it requested for street lighting. There was some general feeling uh, among budget people that the installation of the sodium vapor lights would cause an increase in the cost of energy necessary uh, to cause that lighting in the city. But in testimony during the last budget hearings, uh, it was stated that actually the cost of energy for uh, supplying this lighting was less than under the old system of lighting in the city. And we were very grat gratified to hear that. And we certainly look forward to a continued reduction in the cost of furnishing energy for light, uh, the sodium vapor type lights in the city in the future. Well, actually, if you compare 400 watt incandescent with that of a 400 watt high pressure sodium vapor light source, you will receive approximately eight times more lumen output from a high pressure sodium vapor lamp than you would uh, ordinarily from incandescent lamp. It is like uh, stretching your dollars to buy eight times more of the same kind of a thing. In the conversion of the ornamental uh, Washington Globe fixtures. We did uh, have uh, some difficulties at the beginning. However, as you see in this uh, unit here, we had to develop a core and coil assembly which really consists of transformers, ballast, and a starting aid, which uh, is a compact unit that uh, fits on top of the ornamental poles right under uh, the globe and uh, it was uh, once it was developed it was uh, not a problem any longer. Washington DC have uh, approximately 66,000 uh, lights and uh, we were able in such a short time to convert uh, 4,200 of them now to high pressure sodium vapor type. Uh, so far it cost us one million two hundred and thirty four thousand dollars which includes for the new fixtures and uh, uh, necessary poles and uh, brackets. For the calendar year 1972, we plan to convert uh, approximately 10,000 more lights. And uh, this will, in 1972, will cover about 20% of the city's lights. Uh, we did make a preliminary estimate. Uh, we believe that it will be a little over $10 million to convert the entire city. Now, here a year or two ago, in order to proceed with the uh, upgrading of lighting in the downtown area, we did approach and talk to the uh, principal business uh, leaders in the area, the Board of Trade, Downtown Progress, and uh, all others who were interested in the, uh, in the program that uh, uh, we were trying to accomplish. Of course, in the interim, in late years, there's been a crime uh, situation that has developed in the district, and uh, this program, of course, fits in with uh, that element. The reason 7th Street was chosen was because of its wonderful light standards that it had already and it was easily converted to the new type of filaments and lights and uh, so that we put the uh, question to our highway and lighting people and to the city fathers uh, if we could have lighting at 7th which took off first and uh, the night that we had the lights turned on and Mayor Washington was there it was just a complete change. Uh, there were no shadows any longer, and uh, one could see anything whatsoever along the uh, entire street for four or five blocks, which we could not do before. It was an impossible task to observe the uh, uh, people or the stores. Uh, it's amazing. I wish that they would have one lighting uh, in a block that was the old lighting so people could see the contrast. 
The success of high-intensity street lighting in fighting Washington's crime is now established. There has been a significant decrease in overall crime, but perhaps a mayor and his people tell it best. The only way that we're going to make the long-term decrease in the total crime uh, rate that we want, and that is by the government moving out with this initiative and citizens participating, cooperating, because they have something that they really feel and really know is makes the difference. Well, tell me, since uh, we've had these lights down in this residential area, what has it meant to you? It meant more lighting, not, not more, more crimes. People have been saved on this corner for these lights. There was one incident about a man. He was coming down from the store. He had about $358 in his pocket. I was sitting on my front porch like a good citizen, plus the crossing guard, and I watched this man as he was coming down, and eight, uh, about six thugs jumped him. Well, at that time, I jumped off my porch and ran down toward him. I saved him the $350. The boys didn't get but $8. The man was kind of torn up. His pants was torn up. He was all beat up. But otherwise, if it weren't for these lights, we wouldn't see him at all, Mr. Mayor. Lights made so the I difference. think the lights made the difference. I know they made the difference. That's great. And yeah, we need these great. lights all over Washington. <laughs> all right. Yeah. What about that? Yeah. All, right. Yeah. All, right. Yeah. all right. You all can play longer and you're going to play out there. Lights mean a whole lot to us. You got to stop a lot of little kids from getting hit by cars, you know. And the lights. You can see everywhere. And the lights, are they all better? And, and the lights are. I mean, and the lights are better for us to play football at night, and you know it is make you less know, crime because you know, you know people that people, people that make crime in this world they would not make more crime than they usually make when it is in the dark. Well, certainly one of the great advantages of the better lighting, I think, the first thing is, of course, it makes people feel safer because they can see, they feel as if it's daylight. Uh, the second very factor, of course, is that it makes it uh, less likely for there to be crimes occurring because individuals, our experience has shown, don't like to commit crime in lighted areas. It makes it more uh, easy for officers to see the citizens walking, for them to see persons moving about and uh, make apprehensions if necessary. Our experience has been that uh, over the last year and a half, as we've put a lot of effort into reducing crime in the, in the city, that we've been able to achieve a one-quarter decrease already in crime. And our experience has been that in those high crime areas where we put the sodium vapor lighting, that the crime has been down as much as 30 and 35 percent, primarily because in those areas we've been able to light the streets a lot better, and this in itself tends to, to reduce crime. And so I think the, the double effect is first that it reduces crime, and, and more important than that, it makes people feel a great deal safer than they do in darkened streets, even though uh, those streets may be, may be safe as well. I've been patrolling this area for about a year and a half. Approximately a year of that was on this motor scooter, and motor scooters are primarily used in high crime areas. Uh, lately, we haven't been assigned to this area so much because crime has dropped. Lighting in the inner city for crime and for uh, security purposes is of great importance, and it's, a, it's something that's recognized by people in the neighborhood and something that they want. And uh, one of the most important aspects of this uh, street lighting program has been the change in the spirit in the communities about uh, something happening, about uh, some positive efforts being taken by government to improve their neighborhoods. Well, it certainly makes a great deal of difference to anyone on the street that they are able to see persons around them and, and, and see, uh, see who is around and who is uh, in the next block. And it's, again, it, it is the safety of daylight or, or tantamount to the safety of daylight. Well, this, as you know, is the nation's capital. We believe it should be the capital for all people. We believe that it should be a city where people from all over the nation can come in peace and in safety and enjoy themselves with their families. It's a family-oriented city. And what we have tried to do is to put in lighting that would make people feel easy, make people feel that they really wanted to walk our streets. This is the City of Washington story, a successful report on a war on crime. Several things are encouraging for all cities. 
First, high intensity lighting is reducing crime and returning the streets to the people. Second, all elements of the public eagerly welcome and appreciate the effort to bring better lighting to their city. Third, adequate funding is available. Washington's Highway Department began its pioneering efforts with one man's ideas and less than $100,000. The City Council, just like all City Councils, responded to the successful beginnings with vastly increased budgets. Private citizens and businesses, eager for better lighting, added personal contributions. The federal government, through Congress, HUD, the LEAA, and other programs, showed its responsiveness by providing additional funds. All of these actions are encouraging to all cities, for they indicate there are several significant means, including lighting, to reduce crime. Possibly this single-mindedness of purpose, this cooperative spirit of action, is indeed our one glow of hope.